This is the 19th year of the International Armoured Vehicle Conference in Twickenham. It started off as a light armoured vehicle conference in London, which I chaired, and that was just two days. But now it's expanded to, to four days. The first day this year was on retrofit, modernisation and how we keep the vehicles in service. The next two days have been on where we're going in the future. How's the nature of warfare changing? How's technology changing? And how do the armies adjust to meet that requirement? In fact, this year there are over 650 people from 53 countries at the conference. And the last day will be on robotics, because that is seen by many people as the way ahead for the future, or partly, but there will always be a need for a man in the platform, I think. But we've got emerging technologies. Vehicles today have become too heavy. We've always talked about armour, mobility and firepower, but we now have got to talk about how we get the vehicles there, how deployable are they. Some of the tanks are 70 tonnes now, which means in many parts of the world the bridges are too heavy. Vehicles take too long to develop. We've got to shorten the time, really. One speaker said one particular vehicle, there were 1,000 requirements in the specification. Another vehicle had just five. So if there's always a danger, you over-specify that vehicle, which takes too long to develop. And by the time you get it into service, it's obsolete. And we've had lots of presentations from the US Army this year. And I'll just quote, they've got six high priority programs. And I'll just run through what they are because they are important. First of all, it's long-range precision fires, because really, American field artillery is really behind the curve. Most NATO countries have deployed 155, 52 cal systems, America's still on 39, but they are looking at things. So, long-range precision fires is tube artillery and rocket systems. The next one is the new ground combat vehicle. The American Army spent billions on the future combat system, which was not only a whole new family of vehicles, Vehicles, unmanned vehicles and the link. That died. So the new ground combat vehicle will replace the Bradley and there's two consortiums bidding for that. Number three is the future vertical lift requirements to replace their older helicopters. Number four is to improve the network that enables all the ground and air-based systems to link up and it could include the naval for the naval gunfire support. Number five is air and missile defence. How do you counter not only ground attack aircraft and helicopters but missiles and increasingly unmanned aerial vehicles. Unmanned aerial vehicles are the eyes and ears of the force commander and if you can neutralise those you can blind the enemy so it's a lot of effort, effort, effort on that and only in Europe recently UAV unmanned aerial vehicles shut Gatwick for a long time so how we counter unmanned aerial vehicles is out there. It could be by jamming, it could be by connected effects. So that was number five. And number six was the soldier lethality. How to improve the firepower of the soldier to make him more effective and operate under all weather and all terrain conditions. So lots of things happened at the conference. Very good this year. A lot of good briefings. But let's see how we go. J just a, a few words on the British programs. We've been underfunded for years but now there's things are happening we've got the ajax family of vehicles entering service the warrior capability program that's up and running see what happens production the challenger 2 let is is there assessment phase is almost over we want jrtv that hasn't been signed and we've selected boxer and hopefully the contract for 500 will be signed in the near future and a lot of that work will be done in the uk